Hey guys, this is Patrick Hall with fstoppers.com. I'm here with the lovely Idiris. And we're gonna be doing a studio shoot where I try to create some nice hard shadows across the face. This is a look you probably have seen a lot, but I'm also gonna see if we can recreate this entire look without using any light modifiers and do it all in post-production. This video is sponsored by Luminar AI. This version of Luminar has been completely rebuilt from the ground up and is Skylum's most powerful piece of software yet. With Luminar AI's new templates feature, the software automatically scans each image and suggests a series of AI processes that are unique to each individual image. Each photograph will be processed differently depending on if it's a landscape, portrait, wedding, food, or product shot. With templates, you can save tons of time by editing your photos by streamlining common adjustments that you make over and over again. Of course, Luminar AI has all the classic filters like sun rays, sky replacement, and structure AI, as well as some new intelligent filters like body and face AI, skin AI, and the brand new Bokeh AI, which allows you to remove distracting elements by blurring your background. To get your own copy of this incredible software, click the link in the description below. So first, let me tell you about the camera that I'm using. This is the Nikon D850. I have a Tamron 24 to 70 millimeter lens. For portraits in the studio, I like to shoot around 50 to 70 millimeters, and then I'm gonna be shooting at about ISO 64, it's the lowest setting on this camera. My shutter speed's gonna be locked at 1 200th of a second, that's the fastest sync speed this camera can do, and then I'm gonna be shooting wide open at 2.8. To create this look, I'm gonna be using Profoto strobes. I have their Air remote right here. I'm gonna be able to control all of my B10s remotely without even touching them. So let me go ahead and set our very first key light. So the concept for today's shoot is we wanna create a nice sliver of light so it almost looks like she's looking outside a door and part of her face is in shadow while the rest of her face is lit really brightly. In order to do that, we need one hard key light. So I'm going to place my first light. This is a Profoto B10. I just have this bare bulb. I'm gonna place this up high above the model's face. And what I'm gonna be doing is looking at the shadows being cast at the nose and also the jawline. So as you can see here, if I have the light too low, it creates a shadow in the background. If I go too low, she's now uplit, which doesn't look good. If I get too close, I can actually kind of cast shadows down. You can see her eyelashes and her eyes are going completely dark. So I want this light to be in a normal position where the sun might be, but I also want it off to the side a little bit. So maybe right here is the perfect sweet spot. Now in order to control the spill of the light, I'm here in a small studio. I'm gonna be using the Profoto OCF grid. This is a 20 degree grid. If I put this on my light, you can see it cuts the light down significantly. So I don't know if you'll be able to see this on video, but here the light is just bare bulb. If I put my grid on, it's still keeping nice light on Adiris, but it's not letting the spill go all over the room. Now, because this is kind of a three quarter shot, I wanna control the light even more and have it only hitting her face. In order to do that, I'm gonna use this snoot by Profoto. And what's great is this will fit right on top of my grid. And now I can really adjust the light so that it's only hitting her face and making my background go really dark. Now I know my background is gonna go completely dark, but I do want a little bit of light back there. So what I've decided to do is light my background separately. I have another Profoto B10, just bare bulb at a very low setting, and it's just gonna add some fill without creating a shadow from behind the model. So now that we have our key light set with the grid and the snoot, I'm gonna take a test shot so you can see what this image looks like. And go this way, perfect, and you can smile a little bit, perfect. So as you can see from the shot, this is really nice light on her face, but it's not dramatic at all. And it's definitely not the look I'm going for where you have the hard shadows across the face. Now, in order to create the shadows that I envision on her face, we need something between our model and our light. This is typically called a gobo or go between. I'm gonna be using a piece of foam core. And the idea is if I set this between my light source, I can create a shadow that will put just half of her face in shadow and the other half in light. Let me go ahead and clamp this to a light stand and get it in place and we'll show you what this does. I have these nice little clamps that I bought on Amazon. Place this exactly where I want it. I might actually try to make like a triangle, something that's not completely perpendicular, just so that it adds a little interest. So you can see the shadow creeping in as I move this piece of foam core. Keep in mind, we do have our video light on, so the shadows aren't quite as dense as they'll be on the camera, but that should give you a good idea of how this will ultimately look. So now with our fancy gobo in place, let's take a test shot. I also have to make sure that I'm mindful of where my shadow is. Luckily I have the light up high enough that it's not causing a problem. 
But as you can see here, we're getting somewhere. We have a nice shadow across her face. Of course, I'm going to really position her face and this gobo to get it perfect. But I think you can see now where we're going with this in place. Now, ultimately, I wanna have a second shadow on the other side of her face, and I could use another piece of foam core, but I'm gonna do something a little bit different. I'm going to actually use a strip box and see if I can get that hard edge, while also giving me the second benefit of having a little bit of fill light, which is gonna make the image look just a little bit more polished. So here I have another Profoto B10. I have this on a 1.5 by four foot Octabox. I'm put this on my light stand. And then just like the gobo that is made out of foam core, I'm gonna place this in between our model and the light. And I'm gonna try to get this as close as I can to her because the closer this is, or the further the light is from the gobo, the sharper that shadow is going to be. So I need to leave a little bit of space here for me to shoot through, but I do want these really, really close. And you can see now I have the two shadow set up and because I'm using a modeling lamp, I can actually see this with my naked eye. Now I can get this as narrow as I want. I might have trouble shooting through this, or I can open it up a little bit and expose a little bit more of her face. For this shot, I definitely want her eyes lit. So I don't want it to be too narrow, otherwise she's gonna be too mysterious. So before I turn this light on, I'm just gonna use the strip box as a second gobo. Let me take a test shot here so you can see what this is doing. And I have to really be careful how I shoot here so I don't get either of these gobos in my frame. And you can see we have a really hard shadow on both sides of her face. Let me go ahead and turn this on. I'm also gonna turn my key light off so you can see just what this one light is doing and then together you'll see what the final result is. So this shot here is going to be just with the strip box acting as fill. And you can see it creates just a little bit of detail in her face so that everything's not completely black. Let's go ahead and turn our key light back on and we should be able to complete this final look. So we have both lights on. I know you're curious about the power levels. I have this set to 1.5, so it's just barely doing a little bit of fill. And then my key light is set to level five. So now that I have everything in place, I'm just gonna work with the model and make sure that I change the way these shadows look depending on where her face is. Let's go nose down just a touch. Perfect. Close your eyes just a little bit. Look right here, give me a little smile, a little hint of a smile. Perfect. So as you can see, this is a really awesome effect. Of course, I'm gonna have to shoot a lot to get the one perfect expression mixed with the perfect highlights and shadows. So I think we have some really awesome images here. You did a great job. I know you could barely see through this. Let's take all of these images into Photoshop and see if all of this gear is necessary or if you could accomplish the same thing just with one bare bulb light and a few Photoshop tricks. All right guys, so here we are back in the post-production studio and I wanna say first and foremost, I'm not the best guy at Photoshop. I'm the first one to admit that. If you want to learn from some of the best photographers who are incredible in this software, definitely head over to fstoppers.com slash store where you can check out our full length tutorials. We also just recently released the Well-Rounded Photographer, which features eight different photographers teaching eight completely different genres. So if you want to improve your techniques in a certain genre that maybe you don't really work in a lot, or if you're trying to figure out the genre that's best for you and you're just getting started, definitely check out the well-rounded photographer. Let's go ahead and jump into this. If at the beginning of the video, you thought the middle image was the faked one, you would have been correct. Here is the image in Photoshop. I'm gonna go ahead and turn off all the layers here and show you how I built up this image. And then I'm gonna walk through it step-by-step step and show you the technique so that you can do this at home. For this short lesson, I'm basically gonna be using either a curves or a levels adjustment layer darkening the overall image. And then with a simple layer mask, I'm gonna be taking the gradient tool and adding our hard edges. So let me start by coming down here on the bottom. I'm gonna just use levels in this scenario. I'm going to take my midtones and pull them down and you can see it's making the entire image darker. If I were to pull down the shadows, you can see it starts to affect the hue and the saturation and it starts to look really bad. So I would recommend just using the midtones. I also like to use this output levels and pull the whites in a little bit. It darkens the image in a more flat way, which I think is gonna look more realistic for our shadows. Something like this looks pretty good. And with this layer adjustment, it automatically builds in a layer mask. So all we need to do is come over here to our gradient tool, make sure you select the linear tool on the left. And now if I click and drag, it's going to reveal some of the adjustment layer while revealing the underlying image on the opposite side of the gradient. Now, if I do this 
with a long drag and drop, it's super subtle and it makes your image almost look like something's wrong with your exposure. But if I do it really short, you can see it's making these sharp lines. It is a little difficult to get your line to go in the correct direction when you have to make such a short movement. But if I play around with this just a little bit, I can get my edge, my hard edge to go right through her eye. That might look a little too sharp. So I wanna go somewhere like there, that looks pretty good. And now instead of creating a new adjustment layer, if I just hit Alt, click on my current adjustment layer and then drag it up and let go, I'm gonna get a second layer pre-built. My gradient is basically gonna be doubled so I get a darker shadow side. But now if I use my gradient tool and change the layer mask underneath, what did I do in the lesson? I kind of went for a triangle, something like this. That's kind of the basic idea that I was going for. You can see now I have these two layers that I can turn on and off and it gives me the same effect. Now, if one of these layer masks is just a little too strong, we can come up to opacity and I can drag it down to maybe 70%. If I go too low with it, it's just gonna add a little bit of like neutral density, which starts to look like an error. I think for this effect, you really want it to be pretty strong. So somewhere around 75% is pretty good. And then if you want to tweak it even more because it's an adjustment layer, I can double click on that and then I can tweak my layers right here. Of course, I could do this with the curves and some of you might prefer to use the curves, but I think for me, levels is a little bit easier to visualize. So that's the basic technique behind giving yourself these nice gobo effects in post-production as opposed to doing it on location. Let me go ahead and turn off these two layers that I used as an example and show you what I actually did because there's a few little techniques that I did to make it look a little bit more realistic. This first group consists of one adjustment layer and then two different masks. And it's basically giving the nice highlight and shadow across her face. But what this top layer is doing, if I turn this on and off, I have brushed out the effect under her chin. And my thought process here is that if you have a 3D face and you have a shadow going across it, you're actually gonna have a break in the shadow. It's gonna have a shadow across the face, but then when it gets to the neck, because the neck sits back a couple inches, the shadow is then gonna move a little bit. So all I've done is added a layer mask inside of this group, brushed away the effect below her chin. And now if I turn on my second layer mask up here, you can see I've added the exact same effect, but I've just moved the shadow just like an inch forward on her face. I don't know that you have to do this, but I think it just makes it look a little bit more realistic by giving you that nice break. And for a face like this at this angle, I think this works best. Now you can also use the same technique to create vignettes. And that's what I did with this layer. If I turn this on and off, you can see I've just darkened the left side of the frame. Ultimately, I'm trying to push your eye towards her face and darken edges and little elements that might be distracting. And then finally, I've added my second shadow across the top of her face. And then this particular one goes right through her eye, which I think is kind of cool. And because of the angles, we've created that nice triangle effect. Now, the final layer adjustment that I did is actually the complete opposite. Instead of creating shadows on her face, I thought maybe I should brighten up the middle part of her face so that it looks like the sun or whatever light source it is is hitting her a little bit harder and more specular than it is in the frame as it's shot. So for this one, if I turn this on and off, you can see it's just lighting up the middle part of her face. Let me go ahead and show you how I did this one because it does involve a little complex layer masking. So the first thing I'm gonna do is come down here to adjustment layers, pick levels like we've done throughout this entire tutorial. But this time, instead of messing with the mid-tones and making them darker, I'm gonna take the highlights and move them to the left, kind of towards the edge of the histogram here. And if I turn this layer on and off, you can see what it's doing. It's making the entire image brighter, but if I look at the middle of her face that's not in the shadows, it's giving a tonality that I really like. Now, the next trick that we need to do is we need to create a layer mask that includes all of the shadows that we've previously made and then brush those out of this layer so that it's only affecting her face and not the entire image. This can be a little tricky, but if I look at my layer masks down here and find the perfect ones, like this one here, I can come up to select, load selection, highlight new selection, hit okay. It's gonna make that selection there. And then I need to find the one on the left, which is this one here. I'm gonna choose that layer mask come up to select, hit load selection. This time I'm gonna hit add to selection and hit okay. And now you can see it's highlighted perfectly the edge of those two gradients. For the rest of this, I'm just gonna use a lasso tool, hit the shift key, 
And I'm just gonna select this other top part of the image here. And now if I come up to this top adjustment layer that we've brightened, I'm gonna delete the layer mask and then I'm gonna hit the mask tool and it's going to add the mask we just created. And if I turn this on and off, you can see it's doing the opposite of what I want. So I need to select my layer mask and just come up to invert. And now if I turn on our adjustment layer, you can see it's lightening just her face. It's also lightening her shirt. So if I wanna get rid of that, I can just add a group, throw this adjustment layer into that group, add a layer mask to the group, come up to our gradient, and now I can remove that highlight from the bottom part of the frame. So there you go, a pretty easy way to achieve this effect in post-production without having to do it on set. The advantage of this is not only can I perfectly place my shadows on her face, but I can also really control the density a lot more than I can do if I shot everything in camera. Of course, a lot of purists out there enjoy doing it on set and getting it correct, but I find that both these techniques are really viable and you should know how to do both of them. So I hope you guys enjoyed this. It's a little bit different than what we do every day. If you wanna check out more content like this, make sure you subscribe to our channel below on YouTube. Also head over to fstoppers.com to check out free daily content. And if you wanna learn from some of the best photographers, photographers way better than me, head over to fstoppers.com store where you can check out our full length tutorials. I will see you guys very soon.